Hi everyone, it's Sarah here from LK Yoga and today we're going to work through our Warrior One flow sequence. Um, it would be handy if you've got a block, again you don't need these props, you can just make some things a little bit easier or just help you to sort of play with your positioning. Um, alternative to a block, nice big thick book or perhaps even like a Tupperware pot, just whatever you have handy, so that will be useful. And the other thing today is your LK Yoga strap or equivalent, so if you don't have a strap, um, then instead what you can do is use a towel or a belt. Um, ideally it will be worth getting that for a couple of stretches we have um, at the end in particular. Uh, again, not essential but really worth having if you can. So we're going to start class today in a kneeling position if that is comfortable for you. If kneeling is slightly uncomfortable on the tops of the feet then what you can do is take the block between the legs and just take the weight of the bum and the upper body directly onto the block with the feet just resting underneath you instead. Highly recommend this as we will be here just for a few moments. Alternatively, just come into a comfortable seat, whatever that means for you. From here, we're just going to take the hands to rest on the upper thighs and just take a moment to close the eyes to start to scan through the body. So if you can, working your way from the tips of the toes all the way up through the legs to the hips, all the way through the torso to the shoulders, Scanning down either arm to the fingertips and then back up to, through to the crown of the head. And then from here, turning to our breath if we can, so breathing nice and deeply, nice long inhales and exhales. If you can, breathing through the nose, cultivating our ujjayi breath, our ocean sounding breath. But I generally say just breathe in a way that is comfortable for you and do your best job to fill your lungs with air. So on a nice deep inhale, we'll take the arms up overhead, we're going to interlace the fingers and just take the palms up towards the ceiling. If this is uncomfortable, you can just use one hand to hold the other and stretch as so. Just switching the interlace on the fingers or the way you're holding the hands just for a moment. Try to keep the shoulders relatively relaxed here. And then taking the hands behind the back, gently interlacing the fingers and squeezing the shoulders forward, lifting the chest as you do this. And then taking the hands to rest on the knees, just a quick few shoulder rolls. If you want to get the torso moving here too, please feel free to do so. We're just warming up, getting things moving. And then reversing the direction. Great work. And then from here, final thing we're going to do, I'm just going to turn to the side so you can see me nice and clear. I'm going to take the arms up overhead, lift them high, really engaging, energising through the fingers. I'm going to take the left arm in front of me and the right arm come behind. I'm trying to keep the chest twisting forward, hips face forward as well. And then surfing the right arm round, taking both hands up overhead and coming over to the other side. So left arm comes behind, right arm comes forward. Taking both arms overhead here now and then placing them on the mat in front of you coming into tabletop. So just moving any props out the way for now. And tabletop, I'm going to spread the weight nice and evenly through the hands, so to press into the fingers, press through the thumb, press through the base of the hand, and just try to keep a little pocket of air under the knuckles here. On the inhale, we're going to round through the back, coming into our cat pose. And then on the exhale, gently rippling through, gazing towards the top of the mat. So just in your own time with the breath, moving between these two positions. If we were in a class um, with other people, I'd say sort of not worrying about anyone else, the pace they move through class. The same applies here. If you want to move a little bit faster or slower than me, please feel free to do so. And then coming back towards centre, just going to draw the belly button in very slightly, engaging towards the centre. We're going to extend the left arm in front of us and take the right leg behind. Trying to keep the hip, put the hips level, and then coming over to the diagonal. Trying to stay strong, really reaching out through the left fingertips and the right toe. Coming back towards centre, squeezing in and rounding through the back. And then gently setting down. Coming over to the other side, extending the right hand and the left leg. Trying to keep yourself nice and level, coming over to the diagonal. Briefly holding here, trying to grow a little bit longer. And then coming back towards centre, knee towards the elbow, squeezing. And gently setting down, great work. From here, taking the left arm up towards the ceiling, nice and high. Then exhaling, threading it through underneath you, coming into a thread the needle pose. So maybe you can stay here, or you've got options to extend the opposite leg. So that's the right leg, pressing the heel away. 
walking the right arm as another option overhead and across to the left. A really deep stretch down the right hand side of the body here. And then gently drawing the right knee down, walking the right hand back in. And the inhale, lifting the left arm back up towards the ceiling and then placing it back on the mat. Coming over to the other side, lifting the right arm nice and high and then threading it through underneath you, taking the right shoulder down towards the mat here. So again, you've got the option if you'd like to extend the left leg, press the heel away and walk the left hand up overhead and then over towards the right. Breathing deeply if you can. And then drawing the left knee down, taking the left hand back in, inhaling, lifting the right arm back up to the ceiling and then placing it back on the mat here. From here we're going to do a couple of child's pose push-ups. This is a really great way to help you build strength for Chaturanga. We're going to come back into a child's pose, just keeping the knees together, well, or just slightly apart here, not taking them super wide. Then from here we're going to find our way into a plank pose. We're going to walk the hands forward slightly, keep them reasonably wide, just about shoulders width or slightly further. Then we're going to come up into a plank, take a little press up, and press back to child's pose. So I'm just going to do five of these, so do them in your own time, trying to keep the form as much as you can. If you want to keep the knees down as well, that's fine. So I'm on number three. And you're only lowering halfway down here, so to draw the top of the arm parallel with the mat, that will do. Four. Final one if you can, pressing back up, meeting in child's pose. Great work everyone, just have a little deep breath here, starting to wake the body up. And then just spread the fingertips and lift to downward facing dog. Remember, we keep the knees nice and bent at first and gently pedal through the feet. If you want to give the hips a bit of a twist while you do that, please feel free to do so. Any sort of freestyling that feels good and gets you warm is more than welcome. And we're slowly going to translate this pedal into a little walk up the mat. We're going to walk the feet in towards the hands. Coming to a forward fold with really deep bent legs, taking the hands to opposite elbows, letting the head hang heavy. Trying to draw the bum up towards the ceiling, but don't worry. Some days you're going to feel tighter than others. I'm particularly tight in my hamstrings today, so I want to be extra careful with that. So keep the knees bent, lift the hips high, and then over time we try and straighten the legs. And then taking the hands down towards the toes and the inhale, rolling up through the spine, stacking the shoulders, setting the arms nice and wide and drawing the hands into prayer. Exhaling, folding all the way back down. On the inhale, find a halfway lift, resting the hands somewhere comfortably on the legs, keeping the back straight. And then exhaling, folding forward one more time. On the inhale, rolling up through the spine, circling the arms nice and wide. This time we're going to take the hands behind the back, interlace, Squeeze the shoulders together and lift the chest. And then taking the arms back overhead, drawing the hands into prayer, exhaling all the way down. Inhaling, finding a halfway lift. And then from here, taking the hands nice and wide, just maybe slightly wider than the shoulders or directly under them, coming into a plank. I'm going to press the heels away, try and make sure the weight feels nice and even through the hands. Drawing the belly button in towards the spine. We're going to do a couple of little push forwards here. So we're just going to come onto our toes and then press back into the heels. So we're just going to do this five times. Come onto the toes, press back into the heels. Three more times onto the toes, press back into the heels. Two more onto the toes, back into the heels, trying to keep the back nice and straight onto the toes and back onto the heels. Then gently lowering the knees down, taking the chest all the way to the floor. Have a little wiggle with the hips, let them relax. Hands come in line with the shoulders. On the inhale, gently lifting to cobra. Exhaling, lowering back down, taking one cheek to the mat, giving the hips a wiggle again. And then on your next inhale, lifting the chest to cobra again. And as we exhale, taking the opposite cheek to the mat, giving the hips a wiggle again. And this time we can try and lift the arms as well. So we're gonna lift through the shoulder blades, squeeze them together, lift the chest. Coming into a locus. And then from here, taking the hands down, gently pressing up slightly further. And exhaling, lowering back down. Tucking the toes behind you and making your way back to downward facing dog. So remember, we keep 
the knees relatively bent here, lift the hips high, keep a slight bend in the elbows, let them twist in to see each other, and try and keep the head sort of with the um, ears in line with the elbows if you can. On the inhale, we're going to lift the left leg nice and high, and come into warrior one, so bring the knee into the chest and step into the top of the mat. For warrior one, we want to be the, the back foot to be off about 45 degrees, so that's in line with your back uh, placement line. And then we're going to take the front foot to be about fists width away from the centre line. This should be around your hips width. Then from here we're going to stand up and bend to the front leg and twist the hips to face forward. So you can start to draw the left foot forward if it feels comfortable to get a little bit deeper. Hopefully you should be feeling a stretch down the right calf and maybe across the front of the right hip too. We're going to take the hands behind the back and hold onto opposite elbows here. Trying to keep the chest nice and broad, nice straight through the back. Just letting the shoulders relax down. Taking another moment here. And then we're going to release the clasp of the elbows. Take the hands and interlace the fingers, squeeze the shoulders up and come into Humble Warrior. So you might want to draw the left foot slightly further to the left here. We're going to take the left um, shoulder down to the inside of the left knee. And I'm going to try and straighten my back as best as I can. So you will have a tendency to lift the right shoulder, so try to keep it down. In an ideal world, I'll sink right past my left knee. But just working with whatever feels good for you today. Trying to keep the toes on the front foot relaxed. Keeping the core engaged and then releasing the hands, sweeping back up into a warrior one. And then hands frame the front foot. I'm going to gently step back to a plank position. Taking a, another modified vinyasa, knees come down, we lower the chest all the way to the floor, hands in line with the shoulders, inhaling gently, lifting to cobra, exhaling, lowering back down, and making your way in your own time back to downward facing dog. Nice deep breath in downward facing dog when you get there. Trying to lift the hips a little bit higher, and then on the inhale, lifting the right leg nice and high. Stepping through to the top of the mat, coming into warrior one on the other side. So again, we want our fist to be about, um, um, sorry, our front foot to be about fists width away from the centre line. Bit of a twin twist to that. Taking the arms up overhead, trying to keep the hips facing forward, drawing in with the belly button, relaxing the shoulders down. Trying to bend the front knee a little bit more if you can. And then taking the hands behind the back. This time take the other arm on top. So whatever feels a bit weird, that'll be the correct arm more than likely. Breathing deeply, so you can sink a little bit further into the pose. If you need to keep walking the foot forward, that's absolutely fine. Just adjusting the pose as you need to. And then taking the hands behind the back again, we're going to interlace one finger over. Squeeze the shoulders together, lift the chest. And coming into Humble Warrior, so my right shoulder comes to the inside of my right knee. I'm going to try and bend the front leg a little deeper. And try and keep these shoulders as level as you can here. Really sink down to the inside of the right leg. And then drawing in with the core, taking the arms back overhead. And hands frame the front foot, stepping back to a plank. It's time to do some little shoulder taps. So you might want to take the feet a little bit wider so you can stay relatively balanced here. And take the left hand to the right shoulder and then back down. Right hand to the left shoulder and back down. So we'll do this five more times, trying to keep the torso nice and level as we go. So that's twice more, three times more. Remember, you can take the knees down as well, four times. And then your final time. And then lowering the knees down, coming all the way to the mat. Then take some shoulder openers now, so just making sure your props are out of the way. We're going to take the arms to roughly 90 degree bend, with the elbows more or less in line with the shoulders. From here, we're going to gaze towards the right, so we take the left ear down. And then we're going to draw the right leg up and over, and we our little shoulder opening stretch. This is especially important today, as we're going to get into some deeper shoulder stretches in a moment. So don't worry if the right toes don't come all the way down to the floor, that's fine. Just coming as deeply as you can in this pose. And then slowly coming back towards centre, right arm bends to 90 degrees, right ear comes down, and extend the left arm, 
and take the left leg up and over here. Just using these moments to come back to the breath if you can. And then back towards centre. Hands come underneath the shoulders, on the inhale gently lifting to cobra, and on the exhale lowering back down, tucking the toes, coming back to downward facing dog. So today we're going to come back to our warrior two flow as well, all will make sense shortly. So you, these past classes I've been sticking to one flow, we're just going to do the next flow as a warrior two sequence. So as we inhale we're going to lift the left leg up behind us, option to bend and open, taking the heel towards the bum and the knee up towards the sky. And then I'm going to draw the left knee in towards my chest and step to the top of the mat. The left foot comes to the centre line and the right foot crosses behind it. Coming into warrior two, gazing out over the front hand. I'm just going to twist round so you can see me. Let us sink into the bend of the front leg. Try and keep the hips facing towards the long edge of the mat as best you can, gazing out over the front fingertips. Then gently leaning forward, turning the front palm, reversing the warrior left arm, comes up overhead. Exhaling, coming forward to extend the side angle. I'm going to reach out through the right fingertips and press through the outside edge of the right foot. So we're trying to gain a length through the top side of the body. Also feeling nice and energetic, so almost as if we're lifting up through this side. Coming back into warrior two. And then finding your way into triangle. So we're going to take the back foot about halfway up the mat and then fold over the front leg. So imagine you're between two panes of glass here, so we're not leaning forward or backwards. Our foot position hasn't changed, we just shorten the stance. As an alternative here, you can take the hand to a block as well. And then we're going to come into half moon like we did last week as another option. Remember, you can just stay in triangle. I generally cue this with a block, but you can take the hand to the floor as another option. We're going to take the block about a foot in front of us. And gently lift the back leg and see if we can find balance. Try to keep a slight bend in the standing knee here just to keep the lower leg active and to stop you from locking out. So we're using the strength in our leg muscles to hold us here. And then gently coming back into warrior two when you're ready. Sinking into the bend of the front foot, moving any blocks out the way. Taking the hands to frame the front foot and maybe taking a full vinyasa this time. So this is an option. You lower to 90, roll through to upward facing dog. And exhale back to downward facing dog. Great work, nice deep breath here. On the inhale this time, lifting the right leg high. Option to bend and open, taking the heel towards the bum and the knee up towards the scan. Trying to keep the chest level so we don't let the right shoulder come up. Stepping the right foot through to the top of the mat, coming to warrior two on the other side. So open up, opening up into warrior two, gazing out over the front hand like I did on the other side. I'm just going to twist around quickly so you can see me. So I want to try and keep my shoulders over my hips up first. And as I transition into reverse warrior, I lean forward, turn the front palm and draw the right arm up and over. I'm trying to sink into the right leg at any opportunity. And then turning ourselves over, coming to extended side angles. So pressing through the outside edge of the left foot and reaching out overhead. I'm going to stay with the breath as best you can. And then coming back into warrior two. From here, shortening the stance about a foot and coming into triangle. So I'm going to fold over the front leg, taking the left arm up towards the ceiling. Remember, it's always a little bit more tricky to look up at the top hand. You can also look at the front foot in front of you. Just whatever works for you today. And then from here, if you'd like having a go at half the moon again. So we're going to take hold of our block, take it about a foot in front of us, and then gently lift the back leg. So ideally, you want the hand to be underneath the shoulder more or less when you're in the half moon. Trying to keep a slight bend in the standing knee, so you're using that to keep you steady. And then gently stepping back in your own time to warrior two. Great work, everyone. Hands frame the front foot, stepping back to a plank position. This time lowering all the way down to the mat. Just taking a moment to breathe here and then pressing back to child's pose. So option in child's pose, knees together or apart, yogi's choice here. And walk our hands over to the left and stretch down the right hand side of the body. So just try and walk the right fingertips as far over as you can. 
Keep your right hip grounding down. Then coming back through centre and over to the other side. We're going to come back to our warrior one sequence now and have a go at the revolved version of triangle and half moon. So it's always nice to follow from the warrior two sequence so you can compare the revolved version to the standard triangle and half moon pose. So coming back to centre and pressing back to downward facing dog, lifting the hips high. As we're getting a little bit warmer, maybe getting a little bit straighter through the legs, but remember we're focusing mostly on lifting the hips high. And if you want to get a little bit deeper in the legs, you can always try walking the toes in just a fraction and see how that helps you sort of draw the heels down. From here, we're going to lift the left leg nice and high. And I'm going to step the left foot through to the top of the mat, coming back to warrior one. So we're going to turn the foot out, back foot out to about 45 degrees. We're going to take our hips to face forward and bend the front knee nice and deep. From here, we're going to come into our revolved triangle. So to come into a revolved triangle, we're going to shorten the stance slightly so we can take both legs straight. And then we're going to take the right hand, so the left leg is in front. The right hand is going to come across the body, hopefully to a block. And it can also come to the outside of the legs. So I'm going to show you both. So if you've got a block and want to set the block to be just slightly outside or in front, you're going to see what suits you best of the left foot. And then we're going to take the arms across the body. The right arm comes down to the block. You can move it as you get there to what works for you. And you're going to twist and try and gaze up towards the top hand. I'm going to draw the left hip back here as well. So drawing the left hip back is going to make the pose a lot harder, but you're going to get a lot more benefit stretching through the outside of the left leg. If you don't have the block, you can just take the hand to rest on the outside of the leg, but this does make the pose more difficult. You'll also find it more difficult to draw the left hip back and really get the most of the stretch here. So this feels enough to stay here. If you want to have a go at the half moon, then what we're going to do is come a little bit further down our mat, unless you've got plenty of space ahead of you. And we're just going to take the block to be about a foot in front of you again, maybe slightly closer in. I'm going to try and lift the back leg here. So this is a really difficult pose. Don't worry if you find it too much. I'm going to try and keep the left arm facing up. And from here, you'll notice that the right leg is the hips slightly level. Don't expect to try and draw the right leg under like you do with the other side, the other version of half moon. Then from here, gently stepping back to warrior one. This time we're going to grab hold of our strap. So just move your block out of the way and catch hold of the strap. So we're going to try and cow face arms now. So we're going to take the strap into the right arm as the left leg is forward. We're going to draw the elbow up towards the ceiling as best we can. The left arm comes through to catch hold of the back of the strap. I'm going to try and draw the left elbow underneath this as well. So we're using the strap to help us keep the chest lifted and the back nice and straight with the belly still engaged. So what you'll find is if you interlace the hand, you'll probably round through the back. And we want to try and avoid that one. Work on drawing the elbows towards the centre line and keeping the back straight. Really great work. Then I'm going to release the strap. <laughs> Take it out to the side. Arms come back overhead. Hands frame the front foot, taking a vinyasa of your choice. So again, just demonstrate the modifi modification. Knees come down, chest all the way to the floor. Hands in line with the shoulders, inhale, lifting up to cobra, exhaling, lowering back down. And in your own time, coming back to downward facing dog. Really great work, everyone. Just having a quick breath here before coming to the other side. On the inhale this time, lift the right leg nice and high. Stepping the right foot through to the top of the mat, coming to warrior one on this side. We're going to take the arms up overhead. I'm going to try and draw the right hip back and sink into the bend of the front leg as best you can. So we always come to our warrior pose before we come into any modifications, just to let ourselves ground down and get nice and stable. From here, coming into a revolved triangle. So again, we're going to shorten this down so we can draw both legs straight. We're going to take the left hand to a block, and the block's going to come to the outside of the front foot. Remember, you don't need to use the block, but it does help. Left arm so has the opposite to the right leg that's in front comes across the body to the block. You might want to pick the block up and move it slightly as you come here. We're going to try and really twist through now. So I'm drawing my chest over towards the right. Breathing deeply, trying to draw the right hip back. And then if you 
want to have a go at revolved half moon. You, you might have to step back like I do. If you've got space, you can come straight from revolved triangle. I'm just going to draw the block slightly in front of us and try lifting the back leg here. This is a really tricky pose, so don't worry if you can't do it. It's one of those great ones to keep trying. Also, if you're not practicing on a hard floor underneath your mat, that'll make this loads harder. We're going to then step back to warrior one. And if you can, just grab hold of your strap. So we're going to take the left arm up this time. The elbow is going to come up towards the ceiling. I generally like to pull my into position just so I've got a good feeling of where I'm going. And the right arm comes up behind to catch hold of the strap. I'm going to try and draw the right elbow underneath me, keeping the chest lifted, core engaged, and trying to sink into the bend at the front leg here. So if you have a tendency to wear jewellery, I always suggest you take it off. I wear a watch to time my classes, but otherwise I wouldn't, because by wearing the watch, it's very difficult to get my right arm fully through. So just a sort of future thing, if you are wearing jewellery, maybe take it off before yoga, so it doesn't get in the way. And releasing your strap, well done. Placing it to the side, taking your arms up overhead. And this time, if you can, taking a full vinyasa. Your hands frame the front foot, and the lower down to 90. Roll through to upward facing dog. And exhale back to downward facing dog. Just the last little bit of work coming up. We walk the feet in towards the hands and find a forward fold. I've not really held any forward folds for too long in this class. So I'm just going to fold here. You can take the hands to rest on the block. Try and lift the hips up behind you. So remember, you can also take the hands underneath the toes, that's another option. Or you can take the hands to rest on the back of the calves. And wherever you are, you might want to round in a little deeper, just bring the forehead in to meet the knees. That is an option, you can stay a little further out, keeping the back slightly straighter, that's also totally fine. And from here, we're going to come into a chair pose. So we're going to sink the bum down, sweep the arms up overhead and come into a chair. I'm just going to hold here briefly. I'm going to do a slightly unusual um, transition. I'm going to take the hands to prayer and step back to our warrior one. I'm going to set the right foot back, come into warrior one. And then from here, I'm going to draw both legs straight and straighten through the front leg, adjust the stance if you need to. I'm going to fold over the front leg, coming to pyramid pose. So you're going to draw the left hip back here. I'm going to take the hands to either rest on a block. I tend to take it just slightly to the inside of the front leg, or you can rest the hand on the front leg wherever works for you. So you can hold it a bit lower, a bit higher. I really like to use a block for this pose. I'm drawing the left hip back to get a really good stretch down the back of the hamstring. And then from here, we're going to gently step back into our forward fold. So we're just going to move the block out of the way, draw both feet together and come into our forward fold. So whichever option again suits you with the hands. Just here briefly before we come back into our chair, I'm going to sink the bum down and take the arms up overhead, trying to lift the chest through. And then taking the hands to prayer. And this time we're going to step the left leg back. So we're coming into warrior one on the other side, taking the arms up overhead. And then shortening the stance slightly and coming into our pyramid pose. So we're going to take the hands to rest somewhere on the front leg. Or maybe I'm going to take the hands to a block. I'm trying to really draw the right hip back here. I generally keep my back straight, but you can also round in this pose. Drawing the forehead in to meet the knee if that suits you. And then stepping the left foot to meet the right, moving any blocks out of the way. We come back into a forward fold. This time, just give yourself a little bit of space at the top of your mat. So just come to the center of your mat in your forward fold. Taking whichever option suits you, just catch hold of the breath for a moment. Then from here, we're going to have a go at crow. So if you can't do crow, that doesn't matter. We need to just have a go at the pose, just holding on the tiptoes. For those of you that can do crow, or you'd like to have a go at crow, I'm taking the hands to the mat, we're going to draw the knees towards the armpits here and we're going to squeeze the knees into the edge of the upper arm as close to the armpits as you can and engage the core by drawing the belly button in towards the centre. So in our ideal world, in our crow, 
Our knees always sit behind the armpits, but for now we're just going to work on trying to find the engagement by squeezing the knees into the sides of the arms. So we're going to spread the fingers about the same distance as if we were going into Chaturanga. And we're going to lean forward. If this feels enough, then stay here. If you can, just try lifting the feet for a moment or so. And if this feels easy, trying to work on straightening the arms. So really drawing the core up towards the centre. But if you can, just stay here, squeezing tight. Wherever you are, then just coming back down to seated. Great work. Drawing the bum underneath you and just gently having a little rock back. Just giving the spine a bit of a massage. And then we come into happy baby. So let the shoulders spread nice and wide. Take the hand seat inside the knees and catch hold up the outside of the feet. Drawing the heels up towards the ceiling, just letting the shoulders be broad. And again, just rocking gently left and right this time, giving the lower back a massage if that feels good for you. So just taking a moment here, we've just got a last little bit of core work to go and then just some nice slow stretches to finish. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the hands to the inside of the knees and we try a pose called Fall and Crow. So really great work to, just to build up general core strength but also to help you get used to the engagement sensations in core, in core, <laughs> in crow. So we're going to draw the belly button in towards the spine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try and draw the knees again towards the outside of the armpits. I'm going to squeeze the arms back in and lift the chest and the head off the mat as we do this. So we're going to lift and squeeze up nice and tight. We try and reach through, draw the knees to the armpits. And then gently lowering back down, just taking a moment and then immediately coming back in. Squeezing tight, really trying to lift everything off the mat, drawing the belly button down. And lowering back down. And then one more time, squeezing and holding if you can. Really great work. And then gently setting back down. From here, cranking our way up to a seat, we come into bound angle. And I'm going to take the soles of the feet together, let the knees come nice and wide, we're going to lift the chest up high, taking the elbows in to rest on the inside of the calves if you'd like, or perhaps taking the hands out in front. So either option is perfectly fine here. And we're just going to lower ourselves down. So you can round through the back if you'd like, turn the forehead to the feet, or keep the back straight how you were before as well is perfectly fine. We're just trying to get a little bit into our hips here before we have a go at the full version of cow face. So whilst we're in warrior one, we worked on um, some arm positions with using our strap, opening up through our shoulders, taking one arm overhead and one below. When we come back to that now, and perhaps put the legs in as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to come round face forward, and now you can sit in a cross-legged position, maybe even sit on a block if that feels enough for you. If you'd like to have a go at cow face legs, we're going to take the left leg underneath us with the knee facing forward. We're going to take the right leg on top, really try and stack the knees, the feet will come out towards the side. And we're going to take hold of our strap again. So I've got my right knee on top, so the strap comes into the left hand. I take the left arm up overhead and draw the elbow towards the ceiling, lifting and growing through the chest and the spine getting nice and tall. And then I'm going to take the right arm underneath to catch hold of the strap and try and draw both elbows towards the centre line. And if you'd like from here as well, you can start to fold forward just slightly so you get a sort of pinch and stretch sensation around the hips. So you just don't, need, if the, you get a sort of sharp sensation here, then back off, it's a little bit too much. Whereas if the pinch just feels sort of like skin on skin and maybe a little bit of tight muscle around the outside of the hips, then feel free to stay here and sort of draw, enjoy a reasonably deep stretch across the inside of the hips here. And slowly coming back to centre, switching over sides, we're going to take the right arm up over the head, let the elbow come up towards the ceiling and the left arm comes underneath to catch hold of the strap there. You can walk your hands in if you feel like your elbow is still reasonably drawn towards the centre line and the back's nice and straight. If you haven't already, remember to switch the legs over, which I should have done, so apologies there. In fact, I'll come out and switch them, sorry guys. Um, even if you're in a seated pose, you should always switch the legs. It just means um, slightly different position in the hips. I'm just getting a bit carried away here. So right arm ahead, left arm underneath. Remember, well done if you remember to do it. And we're going to gently fold forward. So just again to that point where you feel a nice gentle stretch and maybe a, sort of a little bit of a pinch across the top of the hips as long as it's not sharp, just the sensation of skin on skin. Breathing deeply, see on the exhale if you can come any further forward. And then slowly coming back up to centre. Great work everyone. We'll come to lie on our backs again now. 
We come into a bridge pose. We're just going to open up across the tops of the hips. So we're going to take the um, heels to be kind of wrist distance away from the bum. I'm going to spread the fingers nice and wide. I'm going to press into the heels. I'm going to lift up through the hips. Draw the shoulders underneath you. And either hold onto the outside of your mat or interlace the hands underneath you directly. Then if you'd like, you're going to press up onto the tiptoes. It's a little extra bit of work. Really lift the chest and the hips here. Breathing deeply if you can while you're still here. And then gently setting the heels down, releasing the hands, rolling all the way back down. Great work. Coming to a climb pigeon now. I'm going to take the left leg so that the ankle rests on the back of the right knee. I'm going to thread the hands through to catch hold of the back right leg. I'm going to squeeze the right leg in, try and keep the shoulders nice and broad on the mat, and just gently press the left knee away here. Holding here for a breath or so. Last is really going to slow down now. So just enjoying these final poses. And we just get a little bit deeper. We've got the body lovely and warm. And then switch to go to the side. So the left leg comes down, the right leg on top. Hands come through to catch onto the back of the hamstring. Pressing the right knee away and drawing the left knee towards the chest. And then releasing that off. You can take hold of your strap now and just place it across the hips. Just take a moment to be nice and relaxed. And then we're going to draw the left knee in and interlace the fingers around the knee. And just gently rock the leg left and right, making sure the, all the toes feel relaxed, the whole leg is relaxed. Just giving the hip capture a little massage. When we extend the leg, we're going to take the strap into our hands, place it around the ball of the foot, just below the toes, extend the leg up towards the ceiling, let the back be nice and broad here, press the heel up high, and then gently draw the toes towards um, the top of the mat, so uh, out over the face. So we want to try and keep the arms straight with a slight bend in the elbows, so that over time, potentially, walk your hands all the way up to your foot and hold it. We practice like this, we've got, sort of got the a lot of tension through the upper body, which we don't want, and it's not really ever going to translate to catching hold of our foot. So this is the ideal place to be, we're also keeping the right leg nice and relaxed. Now as an option, you can take the strap into the right hand, left arm out to the side or slightly bent if you don't have room, and draw the leg across the body just as far as you feel the left hip start to lift, and you get a bit of a stretch. So I'm trying to actively pull the left hip down as I draw the leg across. And then just get a bit of a stretch here across the outside of the hip through doing this. And then slowly releasing the strap, bending the left knee and just tucking the right hip underneath you, coming into a recline twist. And then coming back towards centre and over to the other side. So we're going to extend the legs just for a moment. Compare how the left leg feels to the right. Hopefully the left leg feels a little bit more relaxed. Maybe a little bit longer, a little bit heavier, those sorts of sensations. So we're going to take the strap over the hips again. And then draw the right knee into the chest. Interlace one finger over, sort of if it feels a little bit weird. Just gently rocking the leg left and right. And giving the hip capsule a little bit of a massage. Making sure everything else is nice and relaxed. And then taking the strap into the hands, placing it around the ball of the foot, extending the leg up overhead, pressing the heel away, trying to keep the shoulders nice and relaxed. Perhaps walking the hands a little bit further up the strap, still keeping the slight bend in the elbows. And then taking the strap into the left hand that like we did on the other side, we're going to draw the left leg over the body. I'm going to take the right arm slightly bent, I've got space to fully extend it. And then just drawing the leg across the body to the point where the right hip starts to lift off the mat. Trying to keep the right hip grounding down while the left arm gently pulls the leg over. And then gently releasing the strap, we take the left hand to the outside of the right knee, draw the left leg underneath you, 
and just come into a reclining twist, gazing over towards the right side if that feels good for you. And then gently coming to Shavasana, our final place of rest. So we're going to take the hands to rest on the mat beside us with the palms facing up and just the legs extended straight in front of you. Maybe just giving the fingers and the toes a little wiggle before switching off just for a few moments here. If you've got time to pause this video and put on one of your favourite relaxing songs and just lay here for a moment, that would be absolutely amazing. If however you've got some things you've got to get on with, we're just going to spend another moment here before finishing off our practice. I'm just trying to make the breath nice and deep. Just absorbing everything you've done today. And then when you're ready, just rolling over onto one side and taking a moment to rest there. And then slowly finding your way back to seated. Tucking the legs underneath you, gently rocking left and right, finding a nice neutral seat, growing tall through the spine, rolling the shoulders up, back and down, drawing the hands into prayer, nice deep inhale, lifting the chest, and exhaling, bowing the head. Namaste.